Oshawa. I, um, the first place that I read from Glimpse, or I read the aphorisms, was here. No, it was here. I read it here because I came here a few years ago, uh, and um, the open mic was so stellar that I threw away what I was going to read and took a chance and read these crazy things. Uh, and, um, I, and that was the first time I received positive feedback on it. And then I went on and read it in other places and, and eventually people were telling me, don't do what you were going to do, do these instead. And uh, it turned out to be a, a good idea. And so thank you uh, to Tree and to Ottawa for um, uh, being very receptive to new work. Uh, and uh, thanks to the open mic readers for being so good. Because um, I think I saw some of you last time as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to read from the book because I want you to buy it. Uh, but then I also am going to read from some new poems tonight from an upcoming book so that I've never read from. Read before. So uh, I'm just going to jump in. You know, the aphorism is in a very old poetic form. Uh, but it's in fallen on hard times in the last hundred years or so in that it seems to be adopted by philosophers instead of poets. And uh, so um, I realized that I was doing this and I collected them all together and there's a certain weight that they loan each other in um, going from one to the next without any introduction in between. So I'm just going to start reading them. One, there is no way to forget any moment except in its sequence. Two. As with the knife, the longer the conversation, the less frequently it comes to a point. Three, do not discount the stupid bravery of the first who arrive. Four, the butterfly's wings are nothing to the overwhelming force of the common. Five, knowledge is what happens when you rob suspicion of doubt. Seven, until you've seen some sign of your prey, you're not hunting, you're walking. <laughs> 10. Rubble becomes ruin when the tourists arrive. 11. The one-legged bird is not so bad off. 12. Faith is a room with more exits than entrances. 16. To those who wonder whether the strangers we see in our dreams are actually other dreamers, I say it is more important to wonder whether the strangers we see in our waking hours are actually other people. <laughs> 17. Writing the erotic poem is like ironing in the nude. Sexy for women, dangerous for men. Panic... <laughs> Something you gotta just take a quick second. Uh, 18. Panic is worry on a tight schedule. 19. To be mean requires a, cer a certain thoughtlessness. To be cruel, the opposite. 20. Anger without determination is just resignation. This one's dedicated to Zach Wells. 25. Anyone who yells loud enough can be famous among the pigeons. <laughs> 26. Luck. Being born with two lazy eyes that wander the same way. 27. DNA rhymes with TNA. 32. Standards fall like pants, easily and on their own, once past a certain point. 36. Angst is the larval form of boredom. 42. Art is an arranged marriage between chance and humanity. 43. Writing is the mention of myself to myself. 46. Terror is to falling what horror is to sinking. 47. The failed come on is the successful brush off. 48. The thicker the mustache, the more awkward the pickup line. Sixty-six. The good news is you're loved. The bad news is so are your enemies. And I'll leave it on this one for tonight. Since we're, uh, I saw a writing uh, workshop going on before I came in. So this is for, for writers. All writing is a bit like wearing a toupee. Those who can get away with it do, but those who can't look like fools. 
Poetry, in turn, is like jogging in a toupee. <laughs> so these poems that I'm going to read next are coming out in 2012. Uh, and I had done, I've kind of come to that point where I've done five books and they're all fairly different from one another. And now I'm kind of like, well, if I'm going to do something completely different again, I, I really don't know where I'm going to go. <laughs> um, but so the last place for me to go is into form and rhyme and meter. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, and I have a section, I was very inspired by an English poet, Simon Armitage, uh, who has a great book called um, Traveling Songs. It's like a chapbook sized uh, book. And so I've been inspired by the idea of the song. I've been writing in um, balladic meter and common meter, uh, which is uh, really dangerous um, because Gilligan's Island, the theme song, is in is in um, balladic meter and the Yellow Rose of Texas and certain songs like that. I mean, so it can be really uh, hard to make it new and uh, interesting uh, without sort of slipping into the sing song in a dangerous way. Uh, and, there's, and what I've come to realize over the course of doing it is that there's nothing wrong with the sing song um, as long as the words are, 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 are right. And I'm also writing, I'm co-writing an album with a band from Newfoundland called The Once, a, a folk band. Uh, and so I've been writing a lot of lyrics and, um, and uh, I write with a, another folk singer there as well. So, But some of these are more or less that way. So. Hopefully I won't slip into uh, grade two poetry recitation voice. And, uh, it's my first time, I'm a little scared. Okay, um, this is the title poem from the book, White Out. Pull the car over and take a moment to note that this is where the road ends, notwithstanding the memory of the path continuing around the bend. The last red taillights are painted over and the snow presses its face up against the window, begging to be let in. Turn the engines off, it says, and hear this original soft sound, a book of white nothing. I am life without known rules, no signs, no lights, no lines on the road, no ditches, asphalt, or curbs, no people to see, no horizons or turns to make, no destination. Draw a sign. Let your engine die and will compromise temperature, color, sound. I am life where life heaves, turns and reads its final leaf. Inside, the tick-tock of cooling machinery. Outside, the rattle ends its needless scenery. If the road goes on without you, it goes blind. Here, all is only static and knuckle cracking. Here, you ease the tension ahead by waiting despite the chances of being hit from behind. So I'm also going to bare my soul a little bit <laughs> because uh, I am recently divorced uh, this summer. Um, and uh, <laughs> so there are divorce poems in here, which is nerve-wracking. Um, but. Um, they're very oblique, I guess, in the way that I tend to write about myself. Uh, so, this is Song for a Divorce Budget. Two halves don't always make a whole. One can't always be split. Three's not consistently a crowd. Two can't tango worth shit. Four's not perfect for dining rooms. Three can't pin down its roots. Five's hardly furious these days. Four looks awful in suits. Six is no beast when all alone. Five does not a party make. Seven ain't so lucky in love. Six has no dice to shake. Eight will never know it's enough. Seven can't wait all week. Nine won't dress to below the hilt. Eight's not endlessly unique. Ten can't not live decadently. Nine won't be gauged in lives. 
One ignores all lonesome numbers. Zero loathes those who divide. This is Song for Memory. The old men are proud of their jukebox picks, humming in times where the word comes unfixed. Just five kings left and four can turn tricks. The tallow burns down to a bath for the wicks. Some get it right while some make mistakes. Some hear the chorus, some just the break. Some mount the verse through the sips that they take. Some work their chins like their mandibles ache. The harbor's socked in, the lighthouse is on, and row on row of the people they know stand still as a choir with the audience gone. A full house is ten men, but very few glances. They shuffle the cards and hand out the chances, eye all the queens while the clock still advances, and ponder their time in long ruddy trances. Stuck in that space where their reach meets the view, where last thoughts hold on but the first are too few, they crackle like fire on its way up the flue, give what's deserving its day and its due. The hands keep turning to follow the dawn, and row on row the people they know stand still as a choir with the audience gone. The fog is blown off, yet still hangs in the lung. The guitar is in the corner, but its neck is unstrung. The girl at the bar is impossibly young, but the brass gets its white, and the pint still gets slung. No head goes unknotted, no head goes unhung. The time to go home is long ago come. The song goes around on its black vinyl tongue, and row on and row upon row of the people they know stand still as a choir that hasn't yet sung, stand still as a choir that hasn't yet sung. The definition of zero. The origin of any measurement, a value linking positive and negative, completely obscured, the lowest point, gone, not done, that which no longer lives. Determiner of worthlessness, gun sight, cardinal, gravity, digit, freezing, clear, even oddly, wholly precise in time, absence of magnitude, and of phoneme. Kamikaze engine between wings, to aim, kill off, reduce to nil, Alone, none, not, cipher, the thing in nothing, that guy on the couch in the empty house. The massage. <laughs> I'm starting to date again, <laughs> uh, which is bizarre. The massage. Take a lesson in receiving, she says, a bit to be the moment itself a lecture, your own rub received. Let us read to each other and have no other touch. Then we'll walk the dog and wander where we don't wander much. That kink in your neck is a fist holding your most held fears. The pain itself roads untaken, leading here, here, and here. This one's got a swear word in it, so I'm not gonna read it. Maybe I will, but I'll read it last. <laughs> How am I up for time? Am I okay? Mm -hmm. okay? Emergency broadcast system. This is only a test. At the long tone, we will begin. At the long tone, we will end. At the long tone, it is time for the news. At the long tone, you may begin to write. When the bell rings, you may rise to leave. When the bell rings, you may choose to flee. The strike of the clock marks another birth. The strike of the clock leaves welts shaped like hands. Striking the clock marks another morning. But the sh when, as the short tone sounds, events will unfold. As the short tone sounds, the time will be right. At the bell, you will begin to salivate. The experiment will begin when the toll reaches all ears. The experiment will begin when the topless lady rings out the last of her clothes. The experiment involves peeling and will be double blind. There are two strips of cloth for each dingue here. Please put them on, then record and report. 
Ignore the mule of the cat in the box. The mule of the cat in the box has no relevance. Whether alive or dead at the end of the experiment, you must ignore all complaints from the cat. Your first responsibility is to the sound of the tone. Forget the cat. Focus instead on the topless lady. You have been provided with paper for notes. You must only take the notes that are sung to you. If you cannot hear the notes, you may be shocked by the provided visual, visuals. The visuals will provide some context, but will be shocking for some audiences. The boom of the howitzer may make you jump. The boom of the howitzer will connote importance. The silver trumpet's <clears throat> peal will announce a king arriving or leaving. The chime will call you in for tea and cake. The chime is pleasant, but cannot be ignored. As the chime sounds, the birds will fall dead from the trees. The chime will signal your imminent passing from one bicycle lane to the next. The klaxon will sound loudly in warning. The klaxon also cannot be ignored. The klaxon will note the start of the baggage carousel. The horn will give you the fright of your life. The ringing of metal means swords have been drawn. The ringing of metal can never be good. The trolley's clang might remind you of something fond and sweet. The trolley's clang might remind you of your forgotten suitcase. The whistle of the train means all are aboard and accounted for. The whistle of the train used to be in the distance. The whistle of the train now comes with a bright light. At the long tone, the experiment is set to begin. At the long tone, you may begin to run. Each pulse of your blood will count for one beat. Each pulse of your blood will be considered a long tone. For today's purposes, each pulse of your blood will be a starter pistol in the distance, through water, and echoed. Remember, this is only a test. And I'll conclude with uh, the fuse. Thanks very much, Rod. And thanks very much, Rhonda. It's a pleasure to poets I admire, inviting me all halfway across Canada. The fuse. Between every two people runs a fuse, a line from head to heart, or heart to cock, cunt to mouth, eye to navel, hand to throat, long or short, strung this way or that, welding one desire to another love, one need to another want, hate to deeper hate, fear to loyalty, tremble to light touch, flame to a bucket, fall to a turned back. What's unique is in its length or its course, whether traveling from one side or both, or even who's at either end of it. But ignition, just how and when it got lit. Thanks very much. Everybody.